awesome learners. Uh, I'm Andrea Martin, and welcome to Lit Literature, where we, where I'm looking at some of my favorite works of literature that I've had the pleasure of studying while I'm working towards my English education degree here at Grove City College, and just wanted to share with you all a lot of the things that I'm learning and some of my favorite things. So let's just jump right in. Uh, today, I wanted to look at one of my favorite plays of all time. Uh, typically, when you ask an English major about their favorite play or their favorite playwright, they'll typically give you something by William Shakespeare or um, Arthur Miller, but uh, I like to consider myself different um, just because um, I've had my favorite play from a British literature author from the time I was in middle school or even through high school. So, my favorite play is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. And, a funny story, it actually came out of me getting a monologue for a theater camp that I actually um, was involved in over the summer uh, and continue to use this monologue to this day. Um, but I was inspired to read the play from, from reading this monologue and completely fell in love with Oscar Wilde, fell in love with British literature, and I often consider it as one of the reasons that I'm studying English today. So, before we get into the plot of The Importance of Being Earnest itself, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on um, Oscar Wilde himself. So, well, Oscar Wilde was born in 1854, and he died in 1900. And he was actually born in Dublin, so he's not technically like an English author, but he's an Irish author. Um, he's known for writing plays, he's known for like art criticism, he's known for like writing essays, and he's also known for his short stories. So you may, if you know the name Dorian Gray, you may recognize some of his work there too. Um, he attended Oxford and he was actually well-traveled across Europe and across the U.S., um, taking some of his work and some of his ideas across the world. Uh, and when he wasn't um, traveling abroad, he was home with his, his wife, Constance Lloyd Wilde, and their two sons. Um, and in 1895, he actually wrote The Importance of Being Earnest. So five years before his death, he wrote uh, The Importance of Being Earnest. Um, but during that time, he was also on trial, and he was sentenced to couple of months or months to years in jail um, for a, 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 a amorous relationship outside of his marriage um, with another man, so which was very taboo at the time, which um, may actually lead to some of the plot of the importance of being earnest. So quick recap, the importance of being earnest is one of the most intertwined plays that we study in British literature. It focuser, focuses around four very unique characters, four very different characters. So we've got Jack, Algernon, Gwendolyn, and Cecily as our four main players in this play. Um, so Jack is a man who lives both in the city and in the country. When he lives in the city, he goes by the name Ernest, which is where the, the play uh, gets its name, the importance of being Ernest. Well, there is a true importance of being Ernest because his love interest, Gwendolyn, will only love him and only marry him if his name is truly Ernest, which it's not. <laughs> However, in the city, he's only known as Ernest, so Algernon, his best friend, and Gwendolyn only know him as Ernest. But however, when he's in the country with his ward, Cecily, she only refers to him as Jack, and knows that he has an estranged brother who lives in the city, and goes who his, who is Ernest, and Jack goes and takes care of Ernest when he's actually being Ernest and escaping from life in the country in the city. So Algernon finds out about this like country life that Jack has and decides to go investigate and see what his friend is actually doing during the spare time when he's not in the city. Um, meanwhile, Jack is proposing to Gwendolyn, whose mother, Lady Bracknell, who is a legend and an icon, is not as pleased with Jack and Gwendolyn's life choices and decides to interview him to see if he's actually like a suitable mate for her daughter. In the end, Jack is not a suitable mate and does not pass Lady Bracknell's test. However, he is he's gung-ho to prove that he is actually a suitable mate for her. 
So he goes back to the country determined to, you know, kill off Ernest and basically live his life, you know, prove to Gwendolyn that he's a good match. Um, much to his surprise, Algernon is already at his country home and is um, cozied up to Cecily, who has decided that she is madly in love with this character, Ernest. Which puts them both in a bit of a pickle, because both of their women are in love with men named Ernest, and they will only marry the man named Ernest. So, what ensues is this chaos beyond chaos, when the women decide to have a tea party, and both confess that they're in love with a man named Ernest, thinking it's the same person when it's Jack and Algernon, respectively, for Gwendolyn and Cecily. The men in the background stay out of the drama and consume muffins, which is one of the highlights of the play. Um, but it comes to a climax when both men decide to get christened in the name Ernest to please their, please their loves, and, um, Eventually, Lady Bracknell also comes to the country home to investigate where her nephew is, where her daughter is, and she's like, what is all this nonsense? What are you guys doing? And basically recognizes Cecily's governess, Miss Prism, as a servant who used to work in her sister's home who took a handbag and a baby on a train, and the baby's been missing for, like, 30 years. And so basically, she frames Miss Prism for losing this baby and this handbag. And Jack is actually able to produce the handbag and produce his own parents because he's actually Algernon's older brother. And when they look even deeper, his father's Christian name was Ernest. So there is a true importance of being Ernest. And, and Jack was actually telling the truth and not even lying the entire time. So, in the end, Gwendolyn actually does get her wish of marrying Ernest, and Cecily gets over that hurdle and decides that she loves Algernon for who he is. So, with that, like, short, you know, crash course on the play, you can also find, like, themes of of social critics, of, of Wilde critiquing the social climate at the time, and, um, obviously through that one scene where... Lady Bracknell is interviewing Jack to see if she's if he's a suitable mate for Gwendolyn and like some of the ideals that she has put in place that are super important for someone to have as a mate for her daughter are kind of outlandish so he kind of critiques that a little bit um then of course there's always the theme of like having a double life and and whether that actually reflected back on Wild's life we don't know and um just two people at one time, the, the confusion that it can cause, the chaos that ensues of, of lying and going behind someone's back, maybe a precursor to Wilde's own fate catching up to him. We don't know, but, but there's definitely a theme and, and a connection that, that scholars have made. Um, then there are also some, um, some aphorisms throughout the, throughout the play that are sprinkled in amongst, um, Wilde's stellar wit and pure comedic timing. So there's definitely a lot to get out of this play. It's one of my favorites. And if you, have, if you haven't given it a read, I would definitely recommend you go and check it out. So that's all for this session of um, Lit Literature. Um, drop a comment down below if you have any other ideas of um, literature I should look at in the future, or just if you want to see some more content. Uh, have a great guys, great day guys. Thank you so much for watching.